This week's video is about two things, the rims and bases of pots. I'll show you various ways of concluding the lip, as well as demonstrating why I finish the bottoms of pots the way I do. Every vessel has a top and bottom, and how you choose to throw and trim these areas can have a great impact on how the pot functions once glazed and fired. And we'll be starting with the lip. This is in some ways the most important part of any pot. It's how you perceive how thick and heavy a pot might be before even picking it up, and it can also be very intimate as it's the part of the pot you place your mouth on, so it needs to be comfortable and fit into the corners of your mouth without being too thick sharp or irregular. And to demonstrate the various ways you can finish the rim of a pot, I'll be throwing a larger cylinder so the lip portion itself is slightly bigger and therefore easier to see. This will be interspersed with sketches and a few cross sections too, to really explain what it is I'm speaking about. There are of course hundreds of ways of finishing rims, but I'll be focusing on these four, as I think they're the most common. And we'll begin with the flat topped square rim. From a functionality standpoint, if this is a pot I intend to drink from, this square edge is simply too large and uncomfortable to fit into the corners of my mouth. Visually, it can also make pots appear clunky and heavy, even when thrown thinner. Yet, if it's a vessel you're not drinking from, flatter rims like this can be useful for pots like lidded jars and vases, as long as you don't have to put your mouth on it. Inevitably, when thrown, these sharp edges are softer, and once a glaze has been coated over them, that will soften it too, but generally, I think this is a shape that should be avoided if you plan on drinking from the pot. The sharper corners at the top are also more likely to chip if something is knocked against it. The next type of rim is almost the opposite of that, and it's the very curved, rounded top, which looks something like this. This is a step in the right direction if you're making pots you plan to drink from, but it's still, for me, missing a bit of definition, and it can almost make your pot appear as if it's slightly enclosed, which for me makes it slightly less appetizing to use. A rounded rim does help the pot look slightly finer at the top, and it'll make an edge that's less susceptible to being chipped, but it can also be drank from too. I do use this shape sometimes, mainly on pots such as bowls, or the lips of lidded jars as the rim is essentially hidden by the lid. It's very easy to change this rounded shape into a lip that's beveled and comes to a conclusion on the outside wall of the pot, thus making the interior form appear to flow out, offering its contents rather than keeping it enclosed, whilst simultaneously creating an edge that's very comfortable to place your lips on, and also one that makes your pot appear finer at the top, thus visually giving the vessel a sense of lightness, even if the walls beneath it are slightly thicker, but here's a better demonstration of that. If you imagine this pot on a table, you have a perception of how heavy it is even before you've picked it up due to the heft of the rim. Yet, if the thicker walls are pinched out to a thin rim, suddenly that perception changes. And despite the walls below the rim being relatively thick, you perceive this pot is being quite light and very delicate. And to form my rims, I often pinch the top between two fingers like so. Pinch is too strong of a word really. I wet these digits and almost just let the clay flow through the gap created between them, angling the very tip of the rim towards the outer edge of the wall of clay. For something like a teacup or a mug, this shouldn't be a razor edge, and I'll always soften it slightly with the chamois leather so it fits snugly into the rounded corners of your mouth. And it really is only the top portion I bevel, as if I slice away the lip, you can see thicker, sturdier walls below it. These sorts of beveled rims are the types I throw for a majority of my pots. And here's how they look when cut in half, to show you how subtle the change really is compared to the fully rounded top, yet the difference it makes is huge. And when looking at tableware made by professional potters, this is so often the type of rim you see, as it's comfortable, ergonomic, and it gives the lips a finesse that makes the overall pot feel visually lighter, as compared to the squared off rims especially I showed you earlier. I use this beveled edge on every type of cup I make, no matter the angle the wall comes to a conclusion. Yet the way the glaze clings to the clay work of a pot, especially if it's applied thickly, can change the overall shape and appearance of the rim and the part below it, so you do need to be careful. And I still 
definitely don't always get it right. The last type of rim is an enclosed top, made by angling the wall inward, meaning the beveled edge now concludes on the inside wall of the pot, as compared to the outside previously. Now, surprisingly, this shape can still be very comfortable to drink from, and you actually see it a lot on old German beer steins, although that's often so their metal lids could fit tightly over them. Yet, if this shape is used on something like a mug, with a rim that almost appears to slope inward, it creates a shape that visually doesn't look very nice to drink out of, and it isn't particularly inviting, as the contents feel enclosed, and you'll find you'll have to tip this shape over much more to drink the very last drops of whatever's inside but it might help keep the contents warmer for longer, and whilst visually I don't particularly like this shape for something like a mug, it works well for a container, or something to stuff utensils into, or if thrown narrower, it can help to keep flowers and stems upright. But if you compare it to the version that bevels outward, I know which one I'd prefer to drink from. Yet, the beauty of ceramics is that there's a whole variety of ways of doing everything, and some of you might prefer drinking out of different shapes, and that's completely fine. As a maker, and over the last decade, I've definitely developed my way of doing things, and that's really what I want these videos to convey. My thoughts and what I show aren't the only way of doing things, but on my channel, I try to stay true to my aesthetic for the most part, so of course there's going to be a certain style that's prevalent in the videos I make, but I hope those of you watching, who are perhaps learning how to make pots, are trying out and testing as many different styles as you can, as you have to figure out what you don't like in order to discover what you really love to create. So here's the recap, with each of the rims side by side. The square top on the right, then there's a type that bevels inward, creating an enclosed shape. Then there's the outward bevel, which is the shape I predominantly use, due to how comfortable and visually fine it is. And then there's the rounded top, which has its uses, but it lacks definition and direction for me. Also, what's comfortable for one person might not be comfortable for somebody else, but I think the most important thing to consider is how the lip will feel when you place it in your mouth. And those blockier, squared off edges just don't feel as nice to drink from, as compared to those that are sharper and a bit more refined. And dare I say, considered, when learning how to throw, I didn't really think about the rims of the pots I was making. They were just the end point. The overall shape of the pot was the most important thing, and very often I'd just leave them as they were, meaning that the rims of my pots were often quite different from one another, and this became especially prevalent when I was making larger batches of cups. And whilst their dimensions were all the same, their heights and their widths, the rims all looked slightly different, and it was only when I really started to consider them and make them all identical, or conform to a certain stylistic choice, that I really started to see an improvement. And with that, let's move on to discussing the bases of pots. These are, again, just as important as the lip, and how I make mine has changed over the years, as I now trim a beveled edge onto the bottoms of these, which creates this slight gap between where the glaze finishes and the bottom of the pot. And there's a reason for this, both visually and functionally. This is a really old jar made in about 2013, and you can see how the base is finished with a simple right angle. There's no beveled edge or foot, it's just flat. And the problem with this is twofold. The first being that a sharp edge like this is more likely to chip, as it's picked up and used, and so on. Visually, the pot also seems to just blend into whatever surface it's placed on. This makes the pot feel heavier, or more grounded, visually. So, instead, these days, I tend to trim a beveled edge on the bottom, like so. This creates an angle that's less likely to chip with use, as the point of contact is less severe. It doesn't necessarily have to be this large, either. In fact, it can just be very subtle, like so. Just a tiny portion removed from the corner is usually enough. The other thing this does is give me some safety when it comes to glazing. Imagine this red layer I'm drawing is the glaze that covers the pot. On the outside, the glaze flows ever so slightly down, and by beveling this bottom edge, I create an area where the glaze can move down and even overhang a little bit before sticking to the kiln shelf and fusing the pot to it. Which means if you are using glazes that are relatively unstable and do move, a beveled edge like this might stop your pots from sticking to the kiln shelf during the firing. This beveled edge means there's a greater band of shadow beneath the pots you make, which, personally, I quite like, as it makes them feel less grounded and attached 
to the surfaces they're placed on. Depending on the angle you're viewing them from, it also makes them appear as if they're floating ever so slightly, thus once again helping convey a sense of lightness and encouraging the user to pick the pots up. If I weren't to bevel the bottom edge, it means if my glaze moves even just a tiny bit, it'll fuse the pot to the kiln shelf, which inevitably means you end up leaving a larger gap of exposed clay, so if your glaze does move, it won't stick and fuse. It also dictates what glazes you can use, and thankfully this particular recipe is very stable and barely moves beyond where it was put. But if you're using something that is more fluid, there's a high chance this pot would not have survived the firing. Again, this doesn't mean that a beveled edge like this is the only solution, as it definitely isn't. There are hundreds of ways of finishing the bases of your pots. I hope this discussion and hearing my thoughts on the rims and bottoms of pots helps you to think more about how you conclude your vessels. The people who use the pots you make will end up touching the lip and feeling the bottom far more than you may imagine. And in some cases, these features are more important than the walls of the pot or the glazes that cover them. So they're worth thinking about. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. It's a shorter video this time as I'm away demonstrating this weekend at Yorkshire Sculpture Park. As my exhibition there, comes to a conclusion soon. And as always, I'll see you next time.